Today on Ham Radio q and I'm going to talk about some of the methods I use to stay aware of rapidly changing or incoming severe weather. If you like the great outdoors, you're going to need to see this one, so please keep watching for more. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio q and I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, so if this is your first time watching, please be sure to hit that subscribe button. Well, we're getting ready to uh, hit the road again for another camping adventure, and um, as I'm packing and preparing everything, I thought I'd take a moment and kind of run through some of the items that I use in order to stay away, aware of changing weather, uh, incoming severe weather, and, and so forth. Uh, weather can change at a moment's notice, and if you don't really have that situational awareness about you, uh, you may be stuck in something that, in some place and something where you don't wanna be. So uh, there's quite a few methods that I use, and I'm gonna kind of run, th uh, run them through from you know, the highest level awareness to um, what you do uh, when you're really out in the, in, in the backwoods. So uh, I'll just open up the trailer here and uh, show you some of the tools that I use for, uh, change, for monitoring uh, weather and uh, changing severe weather. Okay, as I said, as we go down the list, I'm gonna um, tell you about probably, you know, the, uh, the most, you know, technologically advanced and we'll kind of work our way down from there. And um, if you're in an area where you have uh, good uh, data or cellular reception that, or even in a campground that might have Wi-Fi, uh, probably the best tool that you can use is your phone and um, a couple of apps online. You know, the first one that I always use is uh, the National Weather Service's mobile.weather.gov. And it's a nice uh, web-based uh, service from the National Weather Service that will um, take you through you know, the forecast for an area or for a region, uh, give you important things like um, outlooks and uh, hazardous uh, incoming and the hazardous weather outlook. And um, those are probably the two most important pieces that I usually look at. You know, I'll look at the daily forecast to see what's gonna happen for today and possibly tomorrow. And then I'll also read uh, the hazardous weather outlook if there's one available for the coming day. And one thing to remember is the hazardous weather outlook, you know, if, if there's gonna be changing weather conditions, it might be updated two or three times. So uh, if you see one that's, that's posted in the early morning hours and you've, you've read that, um, you might wanna go back in the early afternoon and check and see if they've updated the hazardous weather outlook because they'll always um, try to keep you abreast of changing conditions in that, in that outlook. And that will kind of give you an indicator if, if they're gonna be tracking you know, a, a weather pattern that may affect where you're located. So that's at, at mobile.weather.gov. Um, next up is an app called um, RadarScope. And I've used RadarScope for many, many years. I've got it both installed on my um, desktop computer at home and then also on the phone. It's available for the iPhone and also uh, Android devices. It's, it's not a very expensive app. You know, I think it's like, like $10 for the, basic, for the basic radar functionality, which is more than you need because it's gonna give you uh, you know, it's gonna give you the, also, you know, the reflectivity, um, uh, the base and the, and the uh, the velocity sweeps and all of those other weather products that um, a sophisticated uh, uh, next rad uh, radar site would provide. You know, the only thing that you don't really get with the basic service is probably lightning data, but you can live without that for the most part. So, uh, radar scope is is definitely you know money money well spent. I'll put links to these these um, services and apps in the video description below if you want to look for more, more of that stuff. But um, definitely, definitely check that one out if you're going to be uh, in an area where you need to, you need to keep a hold of a radar image. And that, that's going to be, that's going to be very important because, you know, there's many times I've woke, I've woken up early in the morning and um, I've heard the wind really start to kick up. I've, I've turned, you know, grabbed my phone, I was able to get a signal, and I, I see, you know, on, on the radar, you know, something that's, that's coming that is not, you know, not, not a very good thing. So we've, um, you know, 
broken camp is as little as 20 minutes because we've been able to get, you know, um, or heard the, heard the change in the weather and um, was, was able to verify that an incoming storm would, would want us to kind of bug out of our location quickly. And that bugging out is, is important. You know, when I, when I talk about situational awareness, um, not only do you want to be, you know, know what's going to be happening with, uh, you, you know, using apps and your mobile device, but also, you know, what's, where, where are you, where are you camping? Are you, if you're in a campground or a park or something like that, um, do they have designated storm shelters? Uh, do they, uh, is there something that you can, you know, where, where you can go to evacuate? If there's not a designated area, is there a place that, you know, you can, that you can escape to if, if, if severe weather is going to strike your location? So I kind of have those areas, you know, mapped out ahead of time. So if you need to bug out quickly, you kind of know where to go. Uh, next up, you know, this and, and this method kind of takes a little bit of, of forethought and preparedness. But um, in my two meter handheld, I will oftentimes before I go somewhere is to um, program the local repeaters into into my handheld radio and um, more than once I've been able to turn that on and pull up a Skywarn net and uh, kind of listen in on what the, what the severe weather storm spotters are tracking and that kind of gives me like I said a little bit more awareness of the situation what's happening and to know you know if I need to um, you know stay put or prepare to evacuate uh, like I say, uh, you know, listening listening to those those storm spotters, you know, can be can be very important in that regards. Um, oftentimes, I will not get onto the net because it I may not have anything important to contribute to the net, uh, but um, just monitoring it is enough is gives me enough information so that I know what to, what my next steps are going to be. And like I said, it's going to take a little bit of planning. So, you know, before you head out, you know, do a little bit of research to find where those um, Skywarn repeaters are. At one campground I was at, they actually had a little uh, postcard on the bulletin board in the camp office that listed the local Skywarn group's uh, repeaters. I thought that was a really neat uh, thing to do. So maybe if you're part of a Skywarn team, you might want to, you might want to talk to the local uh, private campgrounds or uh, county and state parks and see if you could get your um, repeater information posted there for other hams to, and, and maybe even scanner buffs, be able to listen in on your weather nets. Uh, moving on from there, if you can't get you know, a reliable cell signal, um, the next step is would be to um, always monitor with a NOAA weather radio. And even if I do pick up, you know, a decent um, a signal with my phone, I'll still uh, monitor the NOAA weather radio. Uh, you, typically there's coverage, I think, around of, of NOAA weather radio in about 90% of the U.S. There might be some remote spots where you're not going to be able to get a signal, but for the most part, you're going to be able to find um, a NOAA weather station so you can listen to it. Now you can program the, those frequencies into your handheld radio so you don't need to carry one of these. The problem with doing that though is now I'm, I'm listening to NOAA weather on this and I may or may not be able to monitor one or more Skywarn repeaters. If I put my NOAA weather on this and these radios do have, have an alert mode, I can, I can just leave this on during the day and um, have it alert off if there's going to be a watch or a warning issued uh, in the service area that this radio can pick up. And these things are really relatively inexpensive and you can see they're quite tiny. So it is a, it's, it's, it's a, it's a good thing to kind of keep in your, in your camping kit. Uh, next up, if you, even if, if um, you can't pick up maybe a no weather radio in the area or the coverage is scratchy or you want something that's going to give you just a little bit more um, awareness of something that's coming in uh, is I always I like to um, turn on this um, lightning monitor and this this lightning detector will signal if there's lightning strikes as far away as seven or more miles so that gives you really you know some a good heads up if um, skies start turning dark and this thing goes off then you know that you're in a you're in a situation that um, there's a storm cell approaching that's a producing lightning so you know with lightning can also come other other types of hazards so you'll know if, if something's coming in coming in close and coming in fast by how, how often the, the lightning detector goes off so really really good 
um, safety thing to have uh, on your person, especially if you're out, you know, camping, you know, say if you're backpacking or something like that, and if you wanted to carry something super lightweight just in case, you know, I think this would probably be one of the most important uh, tools that you could have to kind of keep yourself safe. Uh, now, moving on, finally, uh, one piece of gear that's, you know, this is really optional. Um, it's not going to alert you for hazardous weather, but it'll kind of tell you, you know, give you an indicator of, of things that are going on. And that's a little um, weather monitor. And this one is made by Kestrel. It's the Kestrel 3000. I've had this thing for years. And um, it's really um, a neat neat thing um, to have. You know, it'll, it'll track... Uh, It'll tell you temperature, wind speed. Uh, you can monitor. You can you can have it set to kind of track wind gusts. It'll also do um, humidity, dew point, and heat index and wind chill. So um, really, really kind of a little full, full feature device. I think they also make mo models too that'll do um, barometric pressure. Uh, that might be important if you're out um, in the wilderness. If you see um, the pressure dropping rapidly, you know, you know there's going to be a storm approaching. Uh, another one of those tools to kind of know, you know, to keep yourself aware of, of changing conditions. But this one doesn't do, the Kestro 3000 doesn't do the barometric pressures. So um, that one's not really, you know, that's a feature I don't think is important as, as maybe some of the other ones. So uh, with that, you know, those are the tools that I use to kind of keep track of um, changing weather conditions to be alerted for whether severe weather um, you know like I said severe weather when you're camping is not a good thing so you're really gonna you know if you know within the outlooks that the weather is going to be changing then you then you you know you can know you can turn on your no weather radio maybe monitor a skywarn repeater so you'll know when changing weather happens if there's a if there's a warning going to be issued where in your particular locality so are there any tools that you like to use to monitor uh, changing weather conditions or to be alerted for severe weather? I'd love to hear them. So please leave them in the video, uh, comments below. We'll kind of filter through them and keep that conversation going. Uh, hope to love to hear what you're using. Uh, but for more articles and information, be sure to check out my blog at www.jpol-antenna.com. Uh, your support of this channel drives the production of future videos, so if you like this video, you always give me that big thumbs up. I really appreciate that. Check out some of the recommended videos. And also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Pressing subscribe is your way to be notified when a future video will be released. Well, that's it for this, this time. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day and 73.